All right, so joining us today, um, both speakers and sponsors, thank you very much, gentlemen. We have Russell and Carl from uh, Michelin, Michelin USA, um, who are here. Um, so they've already given away one set of uh, tires to our, well, not given, well, yes, so you gave them away, um, someone bought them. Um, I also sent out a questionnaire to all my members um, earlier this year for a chance to win another set. Um, and I think, have you been getting information on your booth to give sure, away so yeah. another set? Two separate raffles um, at the booth, and each one, well, two separate surveys sure. at, each, at the booth, and each one of them gives you oh, another opportunity. We have two separate surveys over there at the, in the back of the room where we've been, and each one gives you an opportunity to win a, possibly win a set of free tires. So I think all told, that's uh, four opportunities for coming to the Florida Tesla Cup. Cool, thank you very much. All right, Carl, go for it. Thank you. Um, we've got a video we're going to queue up. It looks like uh, he's working on that, but I'll go ahead and do a quick intro. Can you guys hear from the back of the room okay? okay. okay. Thank you. Try, try that again. You try not to uh, talk too loud here. Uh, but yeah, I would introduce myself for those that I have not met already. I'm Carl Driver. Yes, that is my name. I've had a lot of y'all ask me that earlier. But uh, yeah, I am the driver. Um, I've been with Michelin for about 18 years, and I am currently the brand manager for electric vehicles. That's a newly created position to address the rapidly growing EV adoption rate. So we're focused on that, and uh, I'll turn it over to my colleague Russell to introduce him to me. So hello again for those that I um, have met, and hello to those that I have not met. My name is Russell Shepard. I've been with Michelin for about 22, 23 years. Pretty much, I uh, spent most of that time as an engineer, concept and development work in tires. I am now the director of technical communications, so I deal with uh, how to explain things about tires on broad technical topics. So, I'm um, really, really glad to be here because uh, Teslas are quite technical vehicles and the, the tire demands are, are, are quite technical as well. So, uh, the engineer that gets to try to explain some of these things. Come on and join me on stage, Carl. Yeah, yeah. we'll do that. All right. We'll get this kicked off uh, with a little video here, so you may have seen this. Michelin equips more than 8 out of 10 electric vehicle manufacturers in the U.S. because game-changing cars deserve game-changing tires. Try that again. Game-changing tires. Michelin, motion for life. Yeah, do it real quick. Michelin equips more than 8 out of 10 electric vehicle manufacturers in the U.S. Because game-changing cars deserve game-changing tires. Michelin, motion for life. So Russell, um, probably most people here know that there are some differences between gas or ICE and EVs. Why don't you share a couple of those uh, differences with us? Sure, so one of the major differences between an internal combustion engine and an electric vehicle, the tires, is the mass, the weight of it. In fact, if you compare the weight of a Tesla Model 3 to a Toyota Camry, anybody want to guess how much heavier the Tesla Model 3 is? It's 800 pounds heavier, okay? Um, and so what does that mean? That means that, uh, that there are a couple of things just for you and I in a normal use. You put about 30 to 35 PSI in a Camry. In a Tesla Model 3, it's about 42 PSI. Why? because it's not actually the tire that holds the vehicle up, it's the air. So simply put, you put more air into the tire. The impact of that though, as many of you have seen, is that even when you put more air in the tire, the tires wear faster. On average, about 20% faster. Okay, so that's, that's one of the consequences. And we understand this and we're working to address that. Uh, the next thing is that electric vehicles are more aerodynamic and the power is transmitted much more efficiently, about three times as efficiently uh, from the battery to the, to the wheels uh, compared to an internal combustion engine, the engine to the wheels. And what that means is that the rolling resistance or energy loss of the tires counts for more. So what does that mean for you? And we'll talk about some of these differences, that the choice of tires you make and put on your vehicle can impact your range. 
We did a study with about 20 different tires, not all of them were Michelin. Um, and I will tell you that one tire that was not Michelin had a 20% impact. I won't tell you which brand it is because that's not the point, but be aware that the selection of tires that you put on your vehicle can have an impact on range. And last is noise. Took a noisy motor out, transmission, and there's no exhaust pipe. So the only thing you hear is whatever noise you produce in the cabin, your radio or whatever, and the rotor. And so the impact of tires, the noise generated and transmitted, it matters more. Um, so what we do typically is, what we do for Tesla, and other manufacturers do this as well, is we put foam in the tires. If you go back there, there are four tires, those are all Tesla OE tires and they have foam in them. Now those, the foam in those tires is for a specific type of noise. We call it cavity noise, but it basically, if you're on a, if you have a drive where you have a lot of irregular pavement, it's going to help with that. It's going to attenuate some of that noise and drop it by as much as maybe three decibels. If you're on a smooth, comfortable drive, then actually that cavity foam is not going to matter. But it's just a matter of function of your drive. So those are three things. Uh, going from an electric vehicle to, from an internal combustion engine to an electric vehicle has an impact on the tire wear. The tires the selection you make can have an impact on your range. And the selection of tires you make may have an impact on the noise that you hear, and that depends on your drive. I got a quick so, so Carl, tell us about what some of our choices are. Uh, just one quick question. And if you're gonna cover this in a minute, Carl, just tell me to shut up and wait. Um, so is there any difference between the OE tires that get shipped on the cars and the tires that we can buy aftermarket directly from Michelin or in Tire Kingdom or wherever? I'll take that question. So how many of you know that your Tesla, the tire that came on your Tesla, has a marking on the tire? You've seen a T, T0, a T1, T2 in some cases. That is the OE marking uh, that uh, is a, we call it a homologation. The Tesla uh, said yes, this tire meets our specifications for this particular model. So when you wear that set of tires out and you go to your tire kingdom or your tire uh, discount tire, you can ask specifically, say, I want the T0 from my Model X. That is the exact same tire that did come on your vehicle. And you'll see in a second, I'm going to share uh, a broader uh, view of our portfolio so that there are different choices you can make if you want to prioritize things other than maybe range or noise. Uh, in fact, could you pull that uh, portfolio is ready slide up for me? Perfect. I'm going to get it uh, shrunk up here. So yes, uh, if you from it would be on your left side. The, so the tire two tire lines on the left side of the slide. Those are typically what would come as an OE. It's on our pilot family or our Promacy family. You're probably familiar with if you have a Model 3, the Promacy MXM4 is the 18 inch uh, tire that comes on there. Um, if you have the Plaid, the uh, Pilot Sport 4S, or if you have uh, a new Model Y with the 20, it has a Pilot Sport E. So those are the tires that typically come OE. Um, and if you want to replace those tires with uh, the same tires, those are your cho you have those choices. Um, if you prioritize comfort and range, those are great choices. But to the, the next four tires, uh, to the left of that, or excuse me, to the right of that, those are our, uh, what we call more of our broad line tire offers. So starting from the first tire, for ultimate wear, we call them this the Defender 2. As you go across the screen, you're gonna go for, to, for maximum wear to maximum grip. So beside that tire, we have our Cross Climate 2. I talked to a number of you today that actually have the Cross Climate 2. Can I sh show of hands who has the Cross Climate 2? Yeah. You like the tire? Yeah. 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 So it's going to be focused on all pretty much uh, uh, best all around grip. So it has great wet, great dry, but it also has winter capability because it has a three peak mountain snowflake designation, which is typically something only a winter tire has. Going to the next tire over, we have our Pilot Sport All Season 4. Again, it's in our Pilot family, so think of performance. So that's going to be your sporty performance or sporty levels of grip uh, going to that tire versus some of the other choices. And finally, um, we 
have a tire for winter application on excise snow. So if you live in an area or if you plan to go somewhere that uh, would require that, if you want to have a winter option, we have that available as well. If, to add to that, for the, if you want the exact same tire, the exact same Michelin tire that came with your vehicle, that tire does not know whether it's going to a test in the factory or, or to a tire dealership to your vehicle. It's made at the same time on the same line at the same time. Yeah, there's some of this out there that the tire that's available in the replacement market may be slightly different, and that is a myth, as, as Russell said. Permission. Permission, yeah, permission only. And Colin, is there any difference in the noise level across that tire range? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the first two on the right, which are, again, are typically targeting electric vehicles, most of the time, or most likely, they will have acoustic foam, again, as Russell had pointed out, to help with that cavity noise. The other tires, the general tires, uh, um, that maybe not specific for EV, would not have that foam today. They would not, so there could be a, a perceived level of noise, uh, uh, cavity noise, um, in those choices um, as well. All righty, questions, questions, questions. If you have fun. Okay, I'm gonna break the ice here. Tubeless, solid tire. Yes, yeah, so what's the question? I read, I heard, or a little bird told me that Michelin came out with a functioning tire, airless tire. So, yeah, so Michelin has been working on airless tires for years. Um, you can actually see some versions of it called Tweel uh, on skid steers. Uh, guy cuts my grass actually has them on his lawn track. Those are for lower speed applications. Uh, we have completely redesigned that. It's called Optus, the passenger car. And that is in research phase. They are actually being tested in fleets. And unfortunately, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> Ask us next year at the Tesla launch. For us, being in Florida, you should never choose an um, all season tire mm -hmm. if, we, um, if we don't drive out of the state, or, or should we um, should always go with summer tires? And follow up question Are any of those all season tires except the one that says all season? So, Russell, you can do your best kind of life. All season, all season, all season, winter. So, these are two are summer tires. They're great in Florida. You, we, well, the Pilot is an all season as well. Okay. Yeah. Where's the Pilot Sport? The, the, okay. pilot, the pilot Sport 4S is the, 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 not on here. Yeah. So, anyway, a lot of your vehicles come with summer tires. Those mean they're good for wet and dry. Yeah. Excellent traction, sporty feel, very great. Um, if, you're, if you love the performance you have, go with one of those. Some of you, you put cross climber tubes or something like that on because you, you travel up north to the snow. That's a good reason to do it. The other reason you may consider going to an all season tire, even though you don't need the winter performance in, in Florida, and I know because I used to live in Pensacola, Florida, grew up there, is they typically have a higher wear rate. Okay, so what we do with the Pilot Sport family is we optimize those for ultimate wet and dry traction, thumb. If you go away from that a little bit, even the Pilot Sport all season four, you get better wear performance. So that's the one reason that some of you have recommended going to an all-season tire is to trade off some of the handling for better wear. Thank you. So Why did you say they'll last longer? They'll last longer, yeah. yes. Did you say that all of these are all-season except for the winter tire? Except for that and the Pilot Sport EV. And the Pilot. Okay, thank so you. So the Pilot Sport EV, the one tire line that we probably should add to this is the Pilot Sport 4S. Which yeah. Thank you. Over, it's in the Pilot family, yeah, yeah. but that, that's where we're calling it. Any other questions from anybody? Oh, Ryan. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Thank you for sticking around, Ryan. Thanks, guys. So I've got a Model 3 Performance with the Pilot Sport 4S's on it. And I'm, I, the, the Pilot Sport EV is a new tire, is that correct? Is that pretty new? It is fairly new, what, yes. What's the difference between the, the 4S and the and the Pilot Sport EV, out of curiosity? And like, what are the kind of trade-offs? I'm actually, I'm coming up on needing a new set of tires soon, and I do want 
stick with Michelin. So I'm wondering if the Sport EV is an upgrade over the 4S or, or kind of what the trade offs are. <laughs> so, so before we answer that question, how do you drive the vehicle? I have fun with it. It's a Model 3 performance. Um, okay. Although I think they yeah, so you like 25,000 miles out of this set, which is way more than I got out of the first set. So, uh, yeah, so I probably are safe where you are. So the differences between a Pilot Sport 4S and a Pilot Sport EV is a Pilot Sport EV, for one thing, Pilot Sport family typically has more than one compound. So this tread compound in the center is optimized. It helps with the uh, handle of torque and the wear for an EV tire. If you have a Pilot Sport 4S, you've got a dry compound on one side and a wet compound on the other. Uh, so the sculpture is different, but also the, uh, the, the trade-offs are different. So for ultimate performance, you said you really like having fun. I would say stick with that Pilot Sport 4, the Pilot Sport 4S. Um, if you want a little bit more towards uh, maximizing your range, you might choose the Pilot Sport EV. Yeah, just to add to that, so if you look at, we've actually got a Pilot Sport EV back there as well. Um, this tread pattern is very similar. It's still a summer tire. Um, the EV is going to be, you know, still a, in our pilot family, so it's a performance oriented, but the EV is going to be a little more focused maybe on rolling resistance. It's going to prioritize it a bit more than, say, the grip level. So you're still going to get that uh, higher grip level, but you're going to get a little more rolling resistance to the range would be a little better in the pilot sport EV. Plus you'll get the uh, uh, acoustic if you're using, well, both of them have, would have acoustic because they, the teaser are more tight. Okay, a quick show of hands in the room. How many people have no idea what tires you have on your car? Come to yourself, Elizabeth. Should, should we care? Should we care? Well, well definitely, we should care. Uh, for, one, that, one, for one reason, um, depending on the choice you make, again, that may impact your range. And depending on your driving conditions, um, how you drive it, you may want to get more wear so that they last longer, or you may wind up in a place where you've got winter weather and you want some better performance care, but you should definitely care. If you if you have the original equipment, Michelin tires on your vehicle, and you love it, put those back on. That's our recommendation. If you have a different balance that you would like, we have a product for you. If you want help on that, well, for, for a little bit of time, you can come back there and ask us. If not, michelinman.com, they'll be happy to help you with it. Okay, a couple of other kind of basic questions. How often, so Tesla's are heavy, as you pointed out earlier, um, and uh, so you've got both rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. How often should we rotate tires? Uh, so, a very good question. Um, and that's something to keep in mind because really the only two things you change out typically on a Tesla, that's your wiper blades and your tires. Um, and so when I turn on combustion engine, you kind of rotate your tires when you change your oil. So every six to 8,000 miles, please rotate your tires. And that's gonna help maintain the wear life. The other thing is keep your air pressure where it should be. That's gonna help you as well. Well, so you forgot about uh, the bumper tool. You gotta change that tool. Old, old school joke for this. Uh, we have a question over here on what to do. Yeah, um, I just got one quick follow up to that as well. Um, so one of the other things that happen, because with a gas car, you have to get it serviced regularly. Some people here probably have Teslas, but they've never gone into the um, service center since they bought them. Um, how often should we tra check tread depth? Or is there an estimate on you know, 20,000 miles, 10,000 miles, 30,000 miles? So I would recommend you check your, tra your tires. Just check them over about once a month. Um, and when you do that, especially for a few models, check the inside of the tire, not just the outside. Now, what I do, I don't mind getting my hands a little dirty, is I actually put my hands into the, uh, the grooves. All the grooves have these things called wear bars, so smooth, 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 bump, right? What you don't want is for the tread to be at the same level as that bump. That's how a wear bar is trying to change the tire. Um, but yeah, check the inside and the outside about once a month. And while you check the tire pressure, at least to get that under control. And if you have an original Model S, check your inside shoulders every 100 miles. <laughs> I've destroyed several sets of my time. Uh, 
Yes. Oh, there's one down the road. There's one here. If you have four-wheel drive, do you need to rotate your tires if they're all uh, in motion? Yes, because the settings are typically different. Uh, from front and rear, just by factor setting, if you hit a pothole, that's even more so, possibly. So yes, definitely rotate your tires even if you have all-wheel drive. Good question. What would be your recommendation if you let your car sit for a while? Like I went um, to France last year for a month and a half. The technician, at, one of the technicians at Tampa Tesla Service told me that before I leave, take the car out on cold tires and maybe 800 feet, 1,000 feet, and drive it back in so you're on cold tires so that you won't get a soft spot on the flat spot. A flat spot on the tire. Is that is that true, or can you leave the car? Because every time you come back into your garage, you're on hot tires, obviously. Is that a, a, a is that a problem for any tire? And what would so you then there's a phenomenal call flat spot. It's if you let a car sit, a tire, a tire sit for a long amount of time, especially in the heat, um, it gets a little flat spot. And when you drive it enough, it goes away. I wouldn't be surprised in that case if that happens. But there, there are kind of some extreme cases we've seen. A car was on a boat being shipped from Asia to the US in the sun. It was tied down with, you know. And, and so that was an issue, but um, I would, I'd be surprised if you had that issue. In, in general, it is a temporary condition. You may see it, but it goes away. He also yeah. pumped up the tires to 50 for that duration. Well, excuse me? He pumped it. Oh, oh, he had, had pumped up the pressure to 50 PSI for that duration. It that went, can that help. went back down to normal. Yeah. yeah, that can help. Again, um, some maybe, maybe some other brands have had um, problems in that area, and that's some, some of the tricks that they've used to do across the board, but in general, that's not a problem for me. I'll be frank, I, I do, there's a book of with several hundred pages on guidance that we give. We don't give any guidance like that. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, last, last question, over here. Yeah, so I'll make it two quick ones. Um, one, with the Model X, you got wider tires in the back than the front, so can you do anything about rotating with those? And the other question, what's your, uh, what's your thoughts about fixing a tire that has foam flow? Tire. Two very good questions. So when you have different size tires in the front and the rear, you can rotate left or right. We actually just had the website updated to make sure we, we uh, took that into account. You can't do back and forth, but you can still do left to right every six to eight thousand miles. Um, the next question is: You have Teslas. You can have um, uh, the homologated. They have a foam thing, a foam in them, um, and there's a repair procedure if you get a puncture in the foam. Michelin's got instructions out on how to repair that, and I've even worked with USTM at United States Tire and Rim Association, uh, and their procedures for that. So, even if you have foam, if you have a puncture, the foam is not a reason it can't be repaired, okay? That can be done. If you hear that from somebody, and you're not sure, call michelinman.com and we'll help you out. Nick, can we have one more quick question? Yeah, we can. One thing I see a lot in Tesla discussions is about using summer tires in cold temperatures. Not necessarily ice and snow, but like I, I'm in North Carolina, I've had my Tesla and boom, it was 14 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So that's really cold. So what would you say about using summer tires, even if you're in the Southeast, but sometimes it gets really cold? So I, I lived in, uh, in France where it got cold and I lived in Michigan and I used to joke, I just to joke, the safest tire was a summer tire in the winter because you'd never get out your driveway. <laughs> okay, so, okay, jokes aside, um, around 40 degrees Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit, I'm sorry, Fahrenheit, you should consider changing to an all season or a winter tire. If it gets very cold, the tires will crack. There's a thing called a glass transition temperature. What does that mean? That's a temperature in which rubber doesn't behave like rubber anymore, okay? And that temperature for summer tires, just the, and it, it's a trade-off between that and the excellent performance in wet is, a, is about that. So yeah, um, for very cold temperatures, 14 degrees, please come up with another option. It's either a different tire, set of tires or if you've got another vehicle, consider that, please. 
It won't stop hard, it, it, it will have a significant impact on breaking in wet conditions as well. That's another reason. And, and if you, and it, just to follow up on that and then we'll close out, but the tire, you can actually freeze the tire. We've done this in summer tire. You can freeze it. Once it thaws out, it gets up to temperature, you're back above that glass transition temperature, so it will not crack. It's when it's cold, below that temperature, and there's a shock if you turn out it, you get a pothole. That's when you risk this cold water crack. I actually got a call from another vehicle brand complaining because they took the vehicles off a trailer in Minneapolis and they cracked before they got to the vehicle. All right, so if you guys are interested, uh, drop me a note and we'll set up a, an online session with these guys. I'm sure you'd love to do a, a Q&A follow-up uh, online uh, at a later date. Um, but for now, thank you. Bye. Bye.